Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz duo cellist Noah Hoffeld and pianist Wells Hanley. They open up about a lot, including their brand new 2022 CD. These musicians met several years ago while performing for various ensembles in New York. They'd known each other for a couple of years, but one day, waiting for another artist in rehearsal, they began to improvise spontaneously. They opened up about their union, this project, and so much more. Enjoy. Gentlemen, thanks for taking a minute after the show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. So let's talk about the new album, Love Rules. And I want to know, it's coming out now on the tail end of this pandemic, more chances to perform live, promote this album. How does it feel to actually have this come out now? To me, it feels great. I mean, this was uh, such a labor of love. And we spent, you know, a a good bit of time uh, playing together. And it's interesting because we made the album before the pandemic started. It was a labor of love, like Wells was saying. It was just a, an experience of getting together and trying to let go of everything that was happening all around us in New York City, in our daily lives, just wanting to spend time together, hanging out, talking about things that were important to us, and then sitting down to make music and hit record in the most spontaneous and kind of organic way that we could muster. You know, we're both involved in meditating and uh, and spirituality in general, and we come at that from different angles. But we share this desire to be in a space that's kind of mm, transcendent, for lack of a better word. And we try to bring that space that we both love into the music. So when the pandemic hit and there was a lot of delay getting the record out there, it was hard to, there was kind of some frustration with that. But when it finally came out, we understood that maybe our intention of bringing this kind of healing vibe to the music was actually it was all happening at the right time with the release and the feedback that we got from people was so strong it has been so strong people saying things like you know this music is getting me through through this day or this is you know this is helping me cope or my heart just feels so much better from listening to this it took on another dimension that we couldn't have imagined when we were making the album because we were just trying to make music and be in this beautiful space. You know, when it finally arrived for people to listen to, we understood like, wow, you know, this is helping people. It's important to people. And it's been super fulfilling for us. Very, very uh, gratifying experience. What did you learn about yourself over this time during the pandemic that maybe you didn't realize before that's going to make you stronger as you get out and promote this album? I would say that for me, you know, I was keeping up a pretty busy gigging schedule and uh, arranging schedule and just, you know, work like everybody else um, in the time before the pandemic. And I think that what happened during the pandemic was that, you know, a lot of things slowed down, at least in terms of the external world. I feel like the space that Noah and I were reaching for and constellating together and the music when we would play, for me, kind of opened up, like that emptiness and that silence opened up in a big way. And I think from my perspective, it was a great time to start working on getting the record out there because I think for so many people, the world closing down put them in touch with themselves in a way that was different. And I think that, uh, you know, putting this music out in a time where people have been forced to kind of go inward and to be quiet and to sit with themselves, I feel like maybe it's part of why the music resonated so much when it did come out. And I know for myself, like, I felt like I was able to go even deeper into that space during the pandemic and feel, you know, even more aligned with, you know, what Noah and I did in the, in the months leading up to when everything shut down was exactly like where I wanted to be heading in terms of that being in that meditative space and really 
trying to bring that to every area of my life. How did this musical journey begin for you guys? How did all this start and lead to today? Wells and I were playing together in a bunch of different settings in New York City, gigging with different singers. And Wells was music director, and I was playing cello and playing his beautiful arrangements for these different singers. We would meet up and rehearse and play shows. There were a couple of moments that we shared where we actually got to kind of just play together and improvise together. Like, I remember there was this one tune we were playing with an artist named Mike Shule, where we were playing Time in a Bottle. And at the end, Mike just wanted us to open up and go into this kind of free-form improvisation, just instrumental. And when we did that, I think Wells and I discovered that there was a space there that was kind of awaiting us to explore as improvisers together and to enjoy that space. And afterwards, we were like, holy shit, what just happened? <laughs> Because <laughs> it was kind, of, it was kind of deep. And, it was uh, deep, and it was it was not <clears throat> at all like what's on Love Rules. In a sense, like we were exploring that space, but we were like, it, if you were to listen to it, it probably sounded more like Weber, right? Or like <laughs> so it was like atonal and like, but but totally from that space. And yeah, I think that was when we we both knew like this is um, we've been skimming the surface of where we could go together musically. What about influences for you guys? I mean, my relationship with the piano started with classical music, but I quickly got interested in jazz and in improvising. I would say, like, I really, like, if I had to pick, like, my guy, I would say probably Paul Blay. And what I love about Paul Blay is, is his use of space. I feel like he really explores the sound of the decay on the piano and like really takes time. I mean, not in all his recordings, but he has some solo recordings where he's really explicitly just trying to play as slowly as he possibly can. And I've always really um, related to that. And also the idea that free playing doesn't have to be dissonant and angsty. I mean, I love playing free like that, but the idea that free playing can take on a form, that your launching point is going to be free, but that you're open to it, to like maybe even an AABA kind of form emerging naturally in the space. So it's kind of this combination of, you know, I think that the Bodhi Heart stuff, it sounds like it's adhering to a form, and it, and it is, but it's a form that was emerging, you know, in real time. And I feel like there's some Paul Blay trio stuff where he's clearly leading the trio and you listen to the record and you say, well, the, 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 the beginnings of the song sound kind of loose, but then it sounds like they're playing from a sheet, you know, but they're not. That was a huge influence on me. And, of course, I have a lot of other influences, like the great, you know, the great uh, romantic classical composers and stuff. But I think that in terms of approach, Paul Blay definitely had, had a huge influence on me in that respect. Let's say you come to Kansas City and you perform live in one of our venues. And you have to kind of come up with a way of describing your show, enticing people to come in. What would you say? How would you do that? I think one thing Wells and I have talked about doing is actually bringing meditation into these programs and giving people the opportunity just for a few minutes to sit with themselves and kind of tune in to themselves before we start playing. And that's definitely a part of what we want to be doing live is opening that space that we've been exploring uh, as individuals and together and sharing that with audiences and then letting them know that the music is going to be a part of that experience and also potentially healing experience for people. I think everybody's been going through so, so much. It's kind of like an epidemic all on its own, just of what people have been suffering on a heart level through this period. And people are looking for an opportunity to kind of come back to the home space inside of themselves. 
and find that center of gravity that they can maybe, you know, begin again. As the world is starting to open up a little bit, people are looking for a way to begin again from inside themselves. And, and I definitely want to share that with people. Everyone's going to have a perception of who you are as a duo as you make this music and people get this CD. But if you had to explain or get to the marrow of who you two are as musicians together, what is it? What would you say? Well, I feel like... You can go ahead. Yeah, I, I would just like to, to start and maybe you can pick up where sure. I leave off, Wells. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's an interesting confluence where Wells has a classical background and also a massive jazz background. And I'm coming from this massive classical background. And then I'm, I've been sort of immersed in jazz too. Because when I was growing up, my brother was a horn player. He still plays. And he turned me on to a ton of jazz. And then over the years, I've had this role of being kind of a string player in all of these jazz settings. So there's something merging with the two of us that's kind of about these two traditions coming together, classical and jazz, and finding a path forward that lives somewhere between the two. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I would add to that is that I think that the discipline of becoming a classical musician and the discipline of becoming a jazz musician are these very different paths. I mean, they kind of require different skills. I mean, a lot of the same skills, but there's just a different discipline to learning how to be an improviser and learning how to like beautifully articulate a composer's message. But I think in the heart of those two traditions, there's so much similarity. And I think that's Noah sort of just said that, I think, in sort of a different way. But I feel like when I'm playing with Noah, I am in the part of myself that knows that those two traditions are more similar than we think of them on the surface, for lack of a better way of putting it. Like when we sit down and start playing, it just feels like music. And I understand that, like, from a publicity perspective, we talk about different styles, you know, as they come together. But that, for my experience of it, it's just this total freedom of genre, whatever we want, you know, based on everything we've done before. Everything we've done before has led up to this moment, and we're with our instruments, and everything is fair game. That's an incredibly liberating feeling as a musician. I love that, Wells. And also it makes me think, you know, improvising is really just composing in the moment. And all those great composers were improvisers, you know? <laughs> they, Definitely. That's how they composed, yeah. That was a great answer. Gentlemen, thank you for taking some time out to talk about the album, your life, and music. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so you much, Joe. Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to both Noah and Wells for their time, music, and honesty. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the NeonJazz.blogspot.com. And finally, for everything Joe Domino related, go to JoeDomino.com. And if you feel like it, you can kick in a few bucks to the Neon Jazz cause. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.